The question that is before us today is, what is the duty of a university? I'm sure you all have heard the common liberal arts college tagline, we are teaching you how to think, not what to think. However, I would argue that the duty of the university is not simply to teach you how to think about ideas, but also how ideas shape the world in which we live and how we can use them outside of the classroom. Our higher education today is in a state of two extremes. We have the vocational training schools where you can learn graphic design or pre-med or pre-law, whatever it is. And then we have the obscure liberal arts college in which several people sit around a table with a tutor and read the Greek philosophers. However, I would say that while those are not wrong in and of themselves, those two things separately are not the duty of the university. To have either or would be reductionist. Bruce Kimball, the author of Orders and Philosophers, writes in his, of this um, paradox in his book, the glory of the philosophers is the pursuit of truth and the freedom of the intellect but the glory of the orators is the link with the text of the past and the focus on recreating communities. I would say the duty of the university is to facilitate a place where orators can pursue knowledge and take its practical applications outside the classroom. I'm going to start with uh, saying that this is a distinct purpose as opposed to primary and secondary education I would say that it is the preparatory school's duty to teach students how to think. When I graduated from my school, Rockbridge Academy in Maryland, I had been through the trivium, grammar, dialectic, and rhetoric. In grammar school, I had been taught the basic facts, all the facts I needed to know about history, science, math. I had recited poems since the age of five. And then in dialectic, I learned to reason and debate. And then in the rhetoric stage, I learned to persuasively speak and write. So by the time I've gotten here, I can take a specific area of interest, a specific area of study, and see how I can use those ideas outside of the classroom. So the distinct purpose of the university is not how to teach people how to think and learn, because they should be able to do that by the time they get here. The purpose is to help students who want to pursue knowledge more deeply in a specific area of interest and how to apply it. But we have this problem, we have two extremes. Bruce Kimball would say we have made a flabby compromise. For the sake of egalitarianism, for the sake of pragmatism, we have watered down our liberal arts education to simply training people how to follow a certain career path. Elwood Cumberly, an American educator and pioneer in the field of educational administration, writes in his article, Does the Present Trend Toward Vocational Education Threaten Liberal Culture? The evolution of education in the former half of the 20th century has tended towards meeting the demands of an increasingly industrial society and converging economic class. Our higher education at many public universities teaches people on feminism and accounting, and the great books and philosophy is left to obscure liberal arts colleges where people get degrees that make their family ask, well, what are you gonna do with that? So, what are we gonna do with these two extremes? What are we going to do with the people who go to St. John's in Annapolis and simply read the great books for four years? And then what are we going to do with the great the large state universities like University of Maryland, where there are thousands of students studying accounting, graphic design, and how to use Excel spreadsheets. We have these two extremes because science and vocationalism does lie close to the heart of American pragmatism. We go to school to learn practical knowledge or earn degrees to slap onto a resume and start earning money as soon as possible. If a person majors in philosophy, he is practically scoffed at by everybody else. So with the rise of technology and science and our shaky job market, 
we tailor our higher education to the immediate pragmatic concerns. Our final cause of education has become helping us get jobs rather than learn our valuable knowledge that, that applies to our lives in a profound way. As Albert J. Knox said in the Theory of Education in the United States, his essay, the teaching of science answered the innovators' demand that our system should be modern and up-to-date, and that we should be men of our time. Vocationalism answered his demand that education should be a preparation for life. These two demands were the revolution's main fulcrum for ousting the earlier discipline. So how can we fix this? I would say that we need both. We need the pursuit of knowledge alongside our practical vocational training. We know the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Kimmel would say, the pursuit of truth is a necessary educational ideal, but it is not sufficient. Liberal free vision of learning all by itself leads to anarchy and nihilism. That is why today we badly need to restate the position of the orators and to establish for our time a basis for reading texts and forming communities of learning. Not to supplant the free vision of the philosophers but to engage in a debate that will in itself be crucial for a student's education. We need the combination, and we need both. Kimball says, Socrates was right about the truth, the orators were right about community. And that fight must go on if our students are to be educated. They must learn to hold the two elements of the two ideals in some real tension, not a flabby compromise. We cannot just look at what the ideas are, but we need to know what they are. We can't just have vocational training. So we must look at the ideas and learn how to take them outside and use them in the world. For example, you could have an integrated curriculum where you have a common core and major in a specific area of interest, and then go on to take some practical electives like learning how to make a documentary film. The orators give what the philosophers can't. Kimball says, the heart of education is forming a community that is united in a disciplined effort of making meaning out of texts. He does not mean eisegesis. He does not mean we should read into the texts. He means exegesis, taking those great books and learning how to bring them into our everyday lives. Like I said, we need both. We have to live in that tension and glory in the paradox of the pursuit of truth for its own sake and yet also um, making a way for ourselves to get a job in this economy and support a family. So that is my proposition for the duty of the university. Thank you.